So when a guy of 17 years old as a Mohawk doesn't stay with mom and dad, there is of no course, way. Of course, of course. So I left and uh, I started to play with Did CCM. you have a Mohawk? Yes, I used to have a Mohawk that. and uh, <laughs> the bus stop, the bus driver didn't even stop to pick me up. <laughs> I'm not kidding you, they were just going, because we were just a few, we were the first and yeah. people would look at you like, they, you're crazy. They're crazy, freaking alien. What yeah. the fuck is the people are? But, you know, now everybody has the earrings and the mom. Oh, it's yeah. okay, it's fine with me. Oh, who cares? Now and it's I, in the mainstream. It's a mainstream. But they're smart. They knew how to package also the punk rock music and the punk rock scene and everything. So after a few years of wild scene, they knew exactly how the music machine, how the music, how the industry uh, can really package and make money with everything. Mm -hmm. And they did. They did. So punk died uh, in the early 80s, uh, mm -hmm. always been dead pretty much, except bands that uh, portray the kind of uh, message like that Kennedy's and on and on and on. They were really uh, in, in uh, quite uh, uh, extreme in a certain mm -hmm. way. That, uh, hardcore. They, they hardcore, they have their own uh, pr pr production, their own uh, discographic, uh, you know, so they were doing all things by themselves. They didn't need to sell out because they were out, they could uh, out -produ produce their own uh, mm -hmm. material. And there were so many bands, uh, the Crass in England, for example, were a great band that they really were talking and doing things, talking about anarchists. They were used anarchy. They used to live in a community. Mm -hmm. They used to freaking have uh, a garden, eat the same food that they used to. Mm -hmm. So they were really serious, serious peers, man. Mm. Serious people. So all the respect, even though. I mean, no. What do you think of our local scene? Oh, DOA or the bands you play mm. with? Well, uh, honestly. Uh, it's great, uh, but for me it doesn't make much, no much sense to be 50 and play punk rock music uh, still mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. have the kind of message attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, I like growing up and changing and be more... Mm, the message is to, but let me rephrase, it's nothing wrong to keep going to have a certain kind of message. Of course. But uh, I don't know how real and uh, serious uh, and real can be a message from people that uh, like DOA mm -hmm. that can be in their, actually, more than 50, in their 53 or 54 or 55, <sighs> bring the kind of message uh, that, uh, uh, I don't know if they live uh, at the, if they live uh, by example, that means what they say, yeah. they really do that. They do. Good for them. Well, and um, If they do, good for them. We all know Joe. We know Randy Rampage. Uh, what were some local bands over in Italy at the time when you yeah. started? What's that? Who were bands. some of the local groups in Italy at the time when you were up and coming? Oh, there were so many. My, around my, 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 my city or around Italy? Because there were so many. Around Italy. Oh, Raw Power, Negazione, Indie Jazz. Raw Power. Deglos, Deglos. I, I played many times with Raw Power. Dayglows toured with Raw Power. Oh, they, they, they toured yeah. with Raw Power. Here Deglos, we go. They played in Vancouver. Okay, so because we, we play well all the time with Raw Power. We, we toured with Negazione. We play with Indigesti, uh, Kina, uh, uh, Ratchet. There was so many bands, I can't even remember. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 I refuse it, uh, Putrid Fever. Uh, there were so many bands, Acid Rain. Uh, uh, I wow. There's so many bands. Yeah, it sounds like it was quite a scene. Oh, it's a huge scene. Oh, no, no, no. For that, I'm surprised great. Pavarotti hasn't uh, <laughs> sung with one of the punk groups or more extreme metal groups. You know what? We have the pop too, so you think yeah, about I know. it. So, uh, oh, he's stuck uh, with more mainstream pop artists when it was Pavarotti. Yeah, yeah. Friends. Before he died, he'd say, yeah, yeah. he'd... Uh, a great artist, but that would have been yeah. oh, he's he one was of my great, favorites. was a great uh, tenor, was a great tenor, was a great, great, great tenor. I was a huge fan of Pavarotti. It would have been cr well, the Italian language lends itself well to singing. Well, yes, uh, because it's bel canto, and uh, everybody at the time is to sing in Italian. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, yes, it's very versatile. Mm -hmm. and la cadenza dell'italiano, quando parli l'italiano, mm -hmm. è, è musicale. Tutti dicono che quando si parla italiano è come se tu cantassi. They mm -hmm. say every time you speak Italian, everybody say, wow, it's like you're singing. It's very musical, the Italian, because it's true, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very, it's very, especially for opera. That's always dramatic. So I mean, of the lyrics are quite intense. So the Italians, uh, phonetic is, is very intense in the way you express yourself. Mm. Nick, uh, his last name is Venditti. So. Yes, Venditti. I tease him and say Vinny Vidi. Vinny Vidi Vidi Vici. 
And yeah, instead of Vinny Vidi. It's a KMSC account, quite actually. Well, I Latin. teased him and said Vinny Vidi Venditti. Yeah. Actually, Venditti was a very well known singer in the 1780s, extremely well known singer in Italy. Wow. Well Antonello Venditti. I mean, just a case. Wow! Uh, just a coincidence, of course. I'm going to give Nick a hard time and yeah, say he comes him. from some lineage of great, Ital yeah. great opera singers. Yeah. Hey, my friend. Hi, guys. Hey. Yeah, it's my boy. Well, thank Ready you. Ready the limo for the big party tonight, today. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Hey, hey, I'm Sunny. If you haven't yeah. met me before, of course, yeah. Freelancing with Sunny. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Alejandro. 